Good morning, everybody. I'm Dave Schweitzer. Uh, that would be the D and D Way Tools, and I have my friend Larry Haunch back here behind the camera. Uh, we're going to go through and show you some of the tools that I make and how to use them and then how to sharpen them. Uh, you have to get used to me probably not looking at the camera, but I'm going to try. I'm used to having an audience out there. Do a lot better. I can look at them people. But we're going to start out here with the beading tools that I make. I have a lot of questions and emails on these. Um, make five different sizes. I make a sixteenth, a one-eighth, <coughs> a three-sixteenths, a quarter, <coughs> and a three-eighths. And I'll kind of go over, uh, we'll probably try each one of those today. This is another tool. Uh, it's called a little diamond tool or teardrop tool. We'll use this a little bit today. Then we'll go to the grinder, we'll go over the sharpening. This is my uh, 3 8 spindle gouge. I also make a half inch spindle gouge. Uh, we're going to use that today also. So <clears throat> just I think we'll just go ahead here and get started. Uh, this is a piece of ingrain maple or a hard maple. We're going to work on the end grain and the side grain of it. I'm going to show you what uh, a lot of people do. They use this. Uh, people that know me are local around here. They use this a lot on boxes. I'm going to show you a couple little decorations that I use it for also. Just a three spindle gouge, pretty hard piece of wood here. We're going to get it cleaned up. And I'll show you a couple things that you can do with the beading tool. It's a little decoration that you can put on the top of your boxes if you want to. The inside of the boxes, the bottom of the boxes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, A small bead on there <coughs> with the 16th inch beading tool. And the way you want to use these, you want to have the handle low. And when you're in uh, face grain mode like this, you want to be somewhat on center. If you're way above center, you got to be at an angle like this. <coughs> I'm going to put just a small little bead here. We want the handle low. We're just going to wiggle a little bit to the right and to the left. That's pretty much it. <coughs> I'm going to use this little uh, teardrop or diamond point tool that I talked to you about. I'm just going to put in some really fine lines here. And these are going to eventually look like little beads. That's number 9, That's number 10. That's number 11. You can see how I presented that with the handle low. <clears throat> and I'm going to frame that with another small bead. I got one little spot there I'm going to clean up right here. Now them look like really small beads. people will wonder how you made a bead that small. They're not actual beads, <coughs> but they look like beads. Okay, I'm going to take those off. We're going to step up and go to a little bit larger bead. Two where it's at here. <coughs> One a little bit below center here. This is a half inch spindle gouge. I'm just going to take this work off here. You can see our little hat's getting a little bit bigger now. The thing about spindle gouge or detail gouge is they let you get into really tight corners. <coughs> I'm going to step up here and I'm going to use the uh, quarter inch or the 316 feeding tool and show you another little 
uh, group of beads that you can do. I use this a lot on face plates. You notice if you can, I'll try to keep these shavings out of the way, but I'm just going to rock this from the right to the left. I'm cutting with the right wing, now the left wing. Right wing, left wing. Right wing, left wing. <clears throat> now I can go back to the 16th inch beater and put some beads in between it. Right, left, right, left. Same type of feel. Some people call this cheating. I call it American ingenuity. Uh, if there's a tool out there that works, I got no problem with using it. We get these done, I'm going to swing around and put them on the uh, side grain also. <clears throat> now this is <clears throat> when we get close to the center here, this is very important for us to be on about this center line that's right across here. Because if we're up here like this, <clears throat> way up here like this, you can see we're going to wind up with not a full bead. So we want to be really close. I mean, it doesn't have to be dead on, but we want to be fairly close. Here's to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. You're going to use these. <clears throat> I wouldn't use it on the very first piece of the very expensive piece of wood that you bought. You want to do like I want you to do with everything, all your tools, is to practice quite a bit. <clears throat> now there's a, just a larger set of the same thing. That's using the beading tools in combination. A little soap on there so you can see that. <clears throat> I'll show you one other thing that you can do uh, as you're using these sometimes uh, if you get a little bit difficult wood at the end of the at the end of the path after you've made the path you can see I squirted a little bit of soap and water on there you get this little fine sawdust still rocking back and forth motion We'll get Larry to zoom in. I'm, I'm going to blow that off a little bit of air. We'll get Larry to zoom in on those. And you kind of see the quality of them. They're pretty good. There's a little, t little bit of a where I didn't get them quite spaced together properly right here. <coughs> uh, you can go in there with this little uh, diamond point tool here. If you want to, you can clean those up right in there. <clears throat> Just like I did there. I'm going to take them off and I'm going to show you one more bead here. Okay, well, that's getting too tall. Time for it to go now. Now I'm going to make a bead with the little teardrop tool. Uh, later in this, I'll kind of go to a blackboard here and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here as I do this, how beads are made. I'm going to just tear straight in here. And I can get away with that, with this tool, because I'm not long ways over the tool rest. All the force is coming down into the tool. I'm going to move over here. Do another one, just like that. Just piercing in. A little bit of wiggle, cut on the right, a little bit on the left. Now I've got about 90% of the bead done. So basically all we've got to do is knock off the corners. You can use a spindle gouge, you can use anything you want to do that. But I'm going to do it with this. And this is just going to be a little roll of the wrist. I'm just going to knock that corner off right there. This is kind of a sheer straight. I try to keep those shavings off of there so you can see what's happening. 
You see, I'm just rolling the rest the same way as I was using the beading tool. This is really easy to sharpen too. While we're here, I will show you how I do that. You can go to the grinder, if it, or you can also just hone it a little bit. Now, if I want to go deeper, I just go back to there, go in a little bit deeper. Beat it again. Take the edges off again. Take the points off. It's kind of scary when you look at it, but it's pretty hard to get a catch with it because you're taking so little wood. And after you get the base part of a bead done, you just want to take off a little bit of wood. There's not a whole lot to take off. You can kind of see what that does there. <clears throat> what I use this for is if I'm going to make beads that either increase or decrease in size. In other words, if they get bigger here, smaller here, I'm going to show you that on a little platter I got right here. That's how the that's how these beads were done on this platter. Uh, these things all begin to look like when I lay them down and get the shavings off of here. But it was done just like this. I pierced in there, pierced in there, pierced in there. I actually just took a pencil, laid these out, and then I just pierced all in there and I rolled it just like this. That's how I do these. Do that again. Show okay. that again. Okay. Uh, this is how I make these beads either increase or decrease in size. I'm just going to pierce in here, pierce in here, pierce in here, pierce in here. And what I did is I laid these out with a pencil first. Uh, if we have time today, we're going to cover this. I'm going to do uh, a beads on a face like this with this tool. After I pierced in there, I'll do the same thing you see me do on this little piece of ingrain maple. I'll just roll this just like this. Just knock off the corner because this part of the tool it took me a while to figure out what this angle was, what I needed to have it to be to, to cover most all different size of beads and it wound up being what it is now. Uh, it did take it several tries though. So. 